So one way by which we obtain energy from the surroundings is by ingesting food products and one of the type of food products that we ingest are carbohydrates. So the simplest and the most common monomer of sugar of our carbohydrate is a glucose and we can store glucose in our body in the form of glycogen and when we need to we break down glycogen into our individual glucose molecules which can be used via the process of aerobic cellular respiration to basically break down the glucose into ATP molecules. So we have the glycolysis process that breaks down glucose into two pyruvate molecules. Those eventually go into the mitochondrial matrix where they undergo a decarboxylation reaction to form acetyl coenzyme A, which is fed into the citric acid cycle and the citric acid cycle ultimately produces NADH molecules and FADH2 molecules and then all the NADH and FADH2 molecules produced in aerobic cellular respiration go on to the electron transport chain to basically form ATP molecules. Now we know in aerobic cellular respiration one glucose molecule produces a net of 36 ATP molecules. Now the problem is glucose is not the only type of molecule from which, from which we can actually obtain our energy. Another very common type of molecule from which we can obtain energy are fats or is fat. Now in fact the majority of the energy that is stored in the human body is stored in fat, in special type of fat molecules known as triglycerides. So triglycerides are basically three fatty acids attached to a single glycerol backbone. So a, a triglyceride is composed of three fatty acids and one glycerol. And in the same analogous way that we store our glucose in the form of glycogen, we store our fatty acids in the form of our triglycerides. So fats ingested into the body are stored in a specialized type of tissue known as adipose tissue and it is stored in the form of triglycerides. Now the question is how exactly do we actually harvest the energy that is stored in triglycerides? In fact, how can we use that energy and transform that energy to form our ATP molecules that are used by our body? Now, basically, triglycerides have to undergo three important stages before we can actually obtain those ATP molecules. So we have stage one, stage two, and stage number three. Now, let's take a look at each one of these stages briefly. So we have the triglycerides actually must be released and mobilized from within our adipose tissue. So a special type of enzyme known as lipase basically breaks down our triglycerides into the three fatty acids and a single glycerol and they go into the bloodstream of our body. Now the bloodstream is composed predominantly of water. Glycerol is actually water soluble and it ends up traveling to the cytoplasm of liver cells. However, fatty acids are hydrophobic and they have to attach to a special type of globular protein, a carrier protein known as serum albumin. And what our albumin basically does is it attaches our fatty acids and transports them to the location, to the cell that requires energy. So once our products of this breakdown of triglyceride ends up in the cytoplasm of the cell, they follow different pathways. So let's examine what happens to our glycerol. The glycerol is basically broken down into a molecule known as PGAL or glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, which is basically an intermediate within our glycolysis cycle. So our our glycerol ultimately, ultimately ends up in glycolysis. So our glycerol goes into glycolysis and we use glycerol to form 
pyruvate molecules which then end up in the mitochondrial matrix where they are fed into our decarboxylation reaction producing acetyl coenzyme A which goes into the Krebs cycle and eventually on the electron transport chain to produce our ATP molecules. Now what about the fatty acids? So the pathway that is followed by the fatty acids is slightly different. What happens to each fatty acid is the following. So the fatty acid goes onto the outer membrane of the mitochondria. So it goes onto the outer membrane. We use a single ATP molecule and we also use a coenzyme A to basically transform a fatty acid into acyl coenzyme A. So an acyl coenzyme A is essentially a fatty acid that is attached to a coenzyme A. And this basically activates our fatty acid and now we can transport the fatty acid into the mitochondrial matrix using a special transport mechanism that involves a molecule known as carnitine. So carnitine is the molecule that helps transport our acyl coenzyme A that contains the fatty acid into the mitochondrial matrix. Now, once the fatty acid, specifically once inside the acyl coenzyme A is inside the mitochondrial matrix, the acyl coenzyme A molecule is shortened by two carbons via a series of four reactions that are known as beta oxidation because the cutting uh, takes place on the beta carbon. So each time our acyl coenzyme A is shortened by two carbons, we basically produce a single NADH molecule, a single FADH2 molecule, as well as an acyl co or an acetyl coenzyme A. So remember, an acyl coenzyme A and an acetyl coenzyme A are two different molecules. So we take the acyl coenzyme A, it undergoes beta oxidation in the matrix to produce our acetyl coenzyme A. And the acetyl coenzyme A is the fuel in the citric acid cycle. So it goes into the citric acid cycle to produce NADH and FADH2 molecules, which then end up on the electron transport chain to produce our ATP molecules. And this process of beta oxidation, of shortening our acyl coenzyme A of the fatty acid continues until we no longer have any carbons left. So this is the process by which we ultimately metabolize our fats, our triglycerides, to form ATP molecules. Now the question is, how many ATP molecules do we actually form when we metabolize our fats? Well, let's take a look at the most common type of fatty acid in the human body known as palmitic acid. So palmitic acid is the most common fatty acid in the human body and basically a single fatty acid of palmitic acid or palmitate basically is broken down into 106 ATP molecules. So we see that a single glucose forms a net result of 36 ATP molecules, but a single fatty acid actually forms a net result of 106 ATP molecules. So we see our fats store much more energy than our glucose molecule. And that's exactly why our body stores the majority of the energy in adipose tissue as our fat, our triglycerides.